Today we're talking about infinitives. Uh, in Latin, infinitives are going to be part of one of four families. The first conjugation is A-R-E. Second conjugation is long E-R-E. That's what that macron is signifying up there is a long E-R-E. Without the macron, we're dealing with the third conjugation and IRE is a fourth conjugation. So the families that we're dealing with are the first conjugation, second conjugation, third conjugation, and fourth conjugation. All, all of our verbs are going to be a part of one of these conjugations. The way that we tell which one they belong to is by their infinitive. So words that we've had so far, like ambulare, that A-R-E tells us that ambulare is part of that first conjugation. The A-R-E in orare tells us that it's part of that first conjugation. These words will never have the long E-R-E infinitive. They'll never have the short E-R-E infinitive. And they'll never have that, that I-R-E infinitive. They belong to that one family. Just like if you were to ask Coach Trammell, what family do you belong to? I wouldn't tell you I belong to Steve. I belong to the Trammell family. And that's the last, that's my last name. Same thing here. You're looking at the last name of that infinitive. That tells you what family it belongs to. Whenever we translate the infinitive into English, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to use the word to, followed by the meaning of the word. For up here, we have the word to walk. We have walk. To is the infinitive part. Walk is the verb. To is infinitive, to err, to make a mistake, to wander off track. To is what signifies um, the infinitive. Now we have to be careful with that because this, this TO that's inside of these infinitives is different from this TO, like in the forest, to, to or toward the forest. This TO is specifically for verbs. So if you're talking about to plus a verb, that's an infinitive. To plus a noun is just a preposition. All right, whenever we're doing our vocabulary from now on, I want you to include I want you to include that infinitive because it tells me what family it belongs to and later on that'll be very very important whenever we're trying to decide whether or not to put ambu lot, which is correct because it belongs to that first family. We don't put an ET there. That's wrong. And the only reason I know that that's wrong is because I know that ambulare, A-R-E, is the family that ambulare belongs to its first family. It has an A, not an E for its present tense. That's the only way I know. So you can do this one of two ways. You can do this by, by showing me the third person singular followed by the third person plural singular t plural nt so that's he walks they walk and then the, the last part you would have the infinitive whenever you're putting the definition of that word now I want you guys to use the word to instead of he walks or they walk I want you to put to plus whatever that word is defined as so that's an introduction to how we'll use the infinitive. Let's look at how it translates into our Latin sentences. Here are a couple of examples. Uh, I'll go through a couple of these, and then you guys can try the last couple uh, on your own. The first one here, we have puer. I know from that R that this is nominative, singular, and masculine. Because it is nominative, it is the subject of my sentence. It's going to be doing the action, which in this case is the word wilt or wish. Okay, this right here, because of that ERE, -E, I know that that's an infinitive. Where do I place the infinitive in a sentence? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. This AM right here tells me that it is accusative, it is singular, and it is feminine. I know because it's accusative that it's going to be a direct object. So my word order is subject, verb. Normally it's a direct object. 
The infinitive in Latin basically replaces the direct object. Because it is a verb, it can have its own direct object. Because it is not, it doesn't have a personal ending like t or nt, it cannot have a regular subject. So when I translate this sentence, I'm going to have puer, the boy, the verb, which is wishes. I'm going to have the infinitive to grab. And then I'm going to have my, my, my direct object, which is girl. And then when I put all this together, I'm going to end up with the boy wants. Oh, it's not to grab, it's uh, to drive away. My bad. To drive away the girl. Even Trammell makes some vocab mistakes every once in a while. To drive away. All right, let's look at the second sentence. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm looking here. Strenuous, I know, is an adjective. It's U.S. That means it's nominative, singular. And masculine, it needs a nominative singular masculine to modify. Check that out. There's a US, nominative singular and masculine, so I know that strenuous is going to modify rewus. Because of the ARE, I know that that's an infinitive. I have a prepositional phrase right here, and then my main verb. So if I go subject, verb, direct object, replaced by the infinitive, so I'll have an infinitive and a direct object. I know that because this is nominative, that rewis is going to be my subject. So I have river. I have the verb, which is is able. I have no. I have no direct object, no accusative, but I do have the infinitive to wander. I haven't dealt with strenuous yet. So strenuous is an adjective modifying rewus. So I'm going to say energetic. Uh, I haven't dealt with the prepositional phrase. I have to decide where I want to put that prepositional phrase. In the fields, the energetic river is able to wander. The energetic river in the fields is able to wander. The energetic river is able to wander in the fields. I'm going to put it right here in the fields. This is a great example of where we have the opportunity to take a little bit of liberty with the literal translation of the Latin. Literal translation says the energetic river is able to wander in the fields. That's exactly right. And if you put that, you'll, you're not going to be wrong. But when I translate this, I'm going to ask myself, what does energetic mean to river as, as a, an adjective? I'm going to say that the energetic river is, is like a roaring river, so, or raging, the raging river is able. Now, rivers wander. What is another way, or what is another word here that would still be pretty consistent with the definition to wander and yet be applicable to the word river? The raging river is able to, I could use the word like stray, creep, I'm going to use creep, and then in the fields. Now this is not a literal translation, but it is very honest to the literal translation, and it makes a little more sense in English. So I can take a little liberty whenever I need to, uh, to translate these sentences. You try number three on your own, and I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Okay, if you still need more time, you can hit pause, and I'm going to go ahead and go over it. All right, Tamarius, once again, I have, I have a nominative, I have a singular. I have a masculine. It's an adjective modifying the nominative masculine, 
singular of lupus. So this is lupus is going to be my subject. I have a ripper, that's an infinitive, so it's going to replace my direct object. Um, this is an adjective, accusative singular and feminine, going to modify the accusative singular feminine direct object poelam, and wolt is my main verb. The translation is then the rash wolf. wants to snatch up the terrified girl. Okay, I'm going to give you a second to look at four. Again, if you, if you want a little more time to work on it, just pl push pause on your play button. All right, I'm going to go through this sentence now. We're, again, because of that R, I know I'm dealing with a nominative singular and masculine. It is a noun, so this is going to be my subject. Ambulare is the infinitive. In silus, preposition, and timid is my main verb. So what I have here is the man will, uh, is afraid to walk in the woods. All right, we're going to move on to using adjectives and translating adjectives adverbally. Sometimes in Latin, um, we, we have to change the meaning, or we have to change the grammatical structure of a word to make it fit with an English translation. We saw that earlier with what I did with the Riva sentence. I changed energetic into raging and I changed uh, the erare into creep in order to make sense of the sentence. Sometimes translated an adjective, uh, you have to do the same thing. This example that I have here, lita, is an adjective modifying puella. They are both nominative, they are both singular, they are both feminine. The literal translation here is, of course, the happy girl runs. And there's nothing wrong with that translation. If you were to place that translation on a test, it would be 100% accurate. However, we don't really talk like this in English. We don't say the happy girl runs. We, we tell you how she runs. She's running happily. The girl happily runs. This is a closer translation um, as far as from Latin to English. We, we would use happily. Now we call this an adverb in English and it modifies the word runs. And I understand that happy modifies girl. But we have to ask ourselves, is that adjective describing the girl or is it describing how the girl is performing the action? Now we do have adverbs in Latin and we'll talk about those later when we get to them. So you could have used an adverb here instead of the adjective. But sometimes they'll put that adjective there and you have to ask yourself, is Lita telling me about the girl, or is it telling me how the girl is performing the action? Let's look at a couple of these sentences, and once again, uh, I'll go over the first two, and then you guys can push pause for three and four and work on those. All right, when I get to Cornelia, I know she's nominative, she's singular, she's feminine, going to be the subject of my sentence. Frigida is an adjective, same case number, gender, so modifying Cornelia. Puerum, the U-M, suggests that it is accusative, it is singular. Puer is masculine. It's going to be my direct object. And then my main verb, excip it. So my translation, therefore, is, the literal translation is that, oh, sorry, uh, is Cornelia. Or the cold Cornelia welcomes the boy. Now we don't talk like this in English. We don't speak like this. We don't write like this. The cold Cornelia welcomes the boy. So I have to ask myself, is cold describing Cornelia or is it describing how she's performing the action? In this case, it's describing how she's performing the action. So I will have Cornelia, and I'm going to change that cold to an adverb. Coldly in English, most of the time we use ly to change things into adverbs, or adjectives into adverbs. Cornelia coldly welcomes the boy. 
Once again, I, I've taken a little bit of liberty in order to make sure that the sentence makes sense in English. Uh, moving on here to the second one, I have sawa. That's an adjective. Same case number and gender as puella, so it's going to modify puella. Lupinum is accusative. It's going to be my direct object. And repel it as my verb. Because puella is nominative, it's going to be the subject. I have the safe girl. Repels or drives away uh, the wolf. And there's nothing wrong with that translation. If you give me this literal translation, it's going to be right. However, we this again kind of gets into that area where we don't speak like this. We don't write like this in English. So I need to change safe and ask myself, is it describing girl or is it telling me how the girl is performing the action? In this case, I think it's telling me how the girl performs the action. So I'm going to change this to the girl safely drives away or repels the wolf. Uh, next, we have uh, ignawis. You can push pause if you need to. Ignawis is an adjective modifying Marcus. They are nominative, singular, and masculine. That means that Marcus is going to be my subject. And Silva is, an, is a prepositional phrase. Ambulot is my verb. So I have, in this case, uh, lazy Marcus. This is the literal translation. Lazy Marcus walks in the, in the forest. Now, once again, th this actually is pretty close. Well, sometimes we say things like lazy to describe a person. But I'm going to ask myself, once again, is lazy describing the person or the way in which, or sorry, or the way in which the person is performing the action? I think in this case, it's telling me that Marcus lazily walks in the forest. And so I've changed that adjective. Once again, I've changed that adjective into an adverb. You can push pause right now and work on number four. Okay, lita is accused, or, or sorry, nominative, singular, and feminine. It's going to modify the nominative, singular, and feminine, Flavia. That means Flavia is going to be my subject. And Silwam, even though this is accusative, it's, it has a buddy here. It has a preposition. So it's going to stay with that preposition. And then I have uh, erot as my main verb. Literal translation is happy Flavia wanders into the forest. And once again, I'm asking myself, is happy describing Flavia or is it describing how she's performing the action? I'm going to say it's describing how she's performing the action. So I'm going to say that Flavia happily wanders into the forest. And that's it for today's lesson on infinitives and how to translate adjectives as adverbs.